Hello everybody, welcome back to another election prediction video. This time we're doing President Joe Biden up against former President Donald Trump, the most likely matchup <clears throat> of 2024 currently. So far, they're the, both the front runners in the primaries. I mean, Trump and Biden are going to be the nominees unless one of them decides to drop out due to their own decisions. But uh, let's get right into this. So let me just set up the safe blue state. So currently... Uh, Trump, we'll just take a look here. Trump is currently leading the popular vote by 2.1%. So that is a considerable amount. There is a lot of undecideds, though. And that could shift the race either way here. Like, a lot of those undecideds could be just more left-leaning voters that don't want to vote for Biden or just want to protest vote in the polls that they think Biden's too old or over the issue of his handling with the situation in Gaza, that could be all the reasons that they're withholding their vote in these polls. We could see them just decide to back Biden again, and he'll start to retake the lead in the popular vote. Honestly, I don't expect Trump to win the popular vote in the election. I think that's not going to happen. I think a lot of those left-leaning voters who are mad about Biden are still going to end up voting for him at the end of the day because they really don't want another Trump presidency. They'll probably default to the lesser evil in their minds. But uh, let's get right back to this map. So, again, Trump, he's leading in most swing states according to the polls. However, the real issue is, uh, are those polls accurate? Because in 2022, they missed a lot of the swing states. So there could be uh, there could be a case where they overcorrected the polls after 2020 where they underestimated Trump and just started to include just a lot more of his type of voter in these polls. That could be an explanation for why he's leading by so much in some of these states. But uh, let's get right into this. So the first states I'm going to be ranking, Colorado, just safe blue. It's just trending left like crazy now. It's not going to get competitive in the future. It's probably just going to keep trending more and more blue over time. New Hampshire and Maine, I'm putting these both as likely blue states. Again, New Hampshire, Biden actually has a pretty sizable lead. We could just take a look at the uh, statewide polling here. In most polls, he's up by about a likely blue margin or so. So, again, I just, I just don't see Trump making this competitive. Most of the time, he's leading by like 7 in these polls. One poll even had him up by 12 in the state of New Hampshire. It's probably going to be about a, an 8-point victory, though, or 7-point victory, something like that, in the state of New Hampshire for Joe Biden. But uh, again, he's quite favored in that state. Maine, he's going to have... Uh, I think he's probably just going to win it by about 8 or 7 points, something like that, 7 to 8, similar to New Hampshire. We might even see New Hampshire be more blue than Maine in the 2024 election just due to college graduation levels being a bit higher in New Hampshire than in Maine at percentage-wise or so. So we're seeing that education polarization continue in the elections. But uh, in May 2nd, they do have ranked choice voting here. I think Trump would only win here by a likely Republican margin. Same with Alaska, which also has ranked choice voting. And Trump isn't leading by a safe Republican margin in Alaska, so it's probably going to be within the likely column just due to RCV. Okay, moving on to Iowa and Ohio. So Ohio shows it within the likely R margin for polling. I think it's going to be a safe R state. I think Biden's not really going to campaign much here. He's probably going to write off Ohio as pretty much unwinnable, which it is. And I think that's a smarter strategic decision not to waste time here. Iowa definitely don't waste time here. They don't have a Senate race here going on. That's competitive. It's just kind of pointless to campaign in Iowa at this point. And it's probably going to go to Trump by 11, while Ohio goes to him by about 10. In Nebraska second, I have this as a lean blue district. Again, it is trending blue, but Biden's just performing worse in the national polls and pretty much everywhere in other states. But uh, he'll still win in New Nebraska second by about three or four. So 3.5% we average that out. In Florida and Texas, I think both these states remain about likely R columns. Again, Latinos in both these states are kind of shifting towards the right, especially in Florida. Honestly, there's a potential that Florida just becomes safe Republican in 2024 if Trump just keeps expanding his base here. And the party registration numbers in Florida, it just keeps getting worse and worse for Democrats every month. They keep losing registrations here to Republicans, just keep losing voters, and the Republicans keep gaining here. So there's a real chance it goes safe R in 2024. Just saying, it's in the realm of possibility, but right now I think Trump wins Florida by about 8 he wins Texas by about six currently. 
Again, the result in Texas could shift, especially if Moore decides to go to Biden. But right now, Biden's down by a good amount of Texas, so it's probably going to be likely Republican for now. In New Mexico and Virginia have these both as likely blue states. Again, these are traditionally blue states, but uh, Biden's under 10 in both of these states so far just because he's doing worse pretty much everywhere in the polls. It's probably mainly due to his age. I feel like if Biden was like 10 years younger, he would probably be doing a lot better. Just do that age concern, which is on the top of voters' minds when it comes to Biden in the polling. That's the issue that hurts him the most. But uh, let's keep on going on with this video. So in North Carolina and Georgia, again, Biden is down in North Carolina and Georgia by likely Republican margins in the polls. So he's doing quite badly in both these states. I don't think he loses by those margins, however. I think he only loses North Carolina by about three, Georgia by about two as of right now. Again, he's behind in the national polls. He's behind in the state polls by a considerable amount. So I think both these states are about lane Republican margins. Again, Georgia, it is getting very diverse, which is good for the Democrats. There's a lot of black voters moving to the state from other states. So it's just making the suburbs a lot more blue over time. However, there's a lot of independents in Georgia that are so far going towards Donald Trump. I mean, we could take a look at the state level polling here. Biden's not even within a lean Republican margin right now. So I don't think he's ahead in Georgia. I think if the election were held today, Biden would definitely lose in the state. I mean, you can just take a look here. Trump is up in the mo most of these latest polls here. Biden hasn't led in a poll since 2023 in the state of Georgia. So Trump is clearly leading here, especially with independent voters and probably some Biden 2020 voters that only narrowly voted for him over Trump. So, uh, again, Trump's just winning a lot of these voters back to his column. And we saw in 2022, Georgia still is a close race between Herschel Walker, the really weak candidate, and Raphael Warnock. So, with Trump, he's not as weak of a candidate as Herschel Walker. It really isn't a surprise to see Trump leading in this state again, especially with Biden's approval rating being much lower than it was back in 2020. So that's just my take on Georgia so far. And with North Carolina, they're typically like one to two points more Republican than Georgia. So it's kind of just fixed to that amount. Okay, moving on to the next few states, I guess we could take a look at Nevada and Arizona. So let's head to Arizona polling so far. I'll just say just because Trump is up most of these polls, just take a look at the undecided columns here. Back in 2022, we saw a lot of undecides just break for the Democrats in the end here because they just didn't want Kerry Lake as governor. They didn't want Blake Masters as senator. Kerry Lake's running for Senate again in Arizona, which honestly would probably hurt Trump because she's just seen as very unfavorable here to a lot of McCain Republicans and those moderate Republicans as well. So again, I see a lot of those McCain Republicans slash moderate Republicans that are the undecideds here, just voting for Biden out of spite against Donald Trump. This is one of the swing states where I think Trump's extremely weak, even if he's polling leads, even with him leading by this much. Uh, I don't think it's going to matter that much. I think those undecideds are going to go to for Biden here. So I have Arizona as a tilt blue state. So I still think Biden has the narrow edge here. It'll be close, but I still think Biden's going to win just due to those moderate Republicans. Again, I really don't really trust when Republicans are narrowly leading Arizona that they're actually going to win because they usually do terrible with independence here. That's what I see happening in 2024 yet again. In the state of Nevada, I kind of changed my mind on this state. I used to have it as tilt to blue in previous videos, but again, you notice in these national polls and the cross tabs, Trump is doing really well with Latino voters. So I think that would probably translate to a narrow victory for him. In the state, even though polls traditionally underestimate Democrats in the state of Nevada, so far Trump's leading by over a lean margin here. So I think for now it's probably a tilt Republican state just due to Trump doing much better with Latino voters now. So I have this as tilt Republican. Okay, and then we have the four Rust Belt states left over. Minnesota, so far... Biden's up here by lean blue margin. It'd only get worse for him if those third parties get on the ballot and that continue splitting the liberal vote here. 
But for now, I think Biden's in a good spot to win Minnesota. However, for Michigan, this is the one Rust Belt state that doesn't have it as a tie, or at least Biden leading a couple polls. Lately, the most recent polls in Michigan all have Trump up here. So, again, I think Trump's narrowly favored in the state of Michigan, and that would give him the election in Wisconsin. It is a dead even tie, however, I still think with Trump's leading in the national polls, I think Trump would be able to narrowly get a win in Wisconsin as well. And in the state of Pennsylvania, we'll take a look at the polling there. Again, on average in the polls, you would probably have Trump winning in this state. However, the high-quality pollsters in Pennsylvania, the gold standard pollsters here, uh, Franklin and Marshall College, Susquehanna Polling, which I think is a really good uh, polling organization for Pennsylvania, and Quinnipiac University, which did pretty well in races in Pennsylvania in the past. They all have Biden narrowly up in this state. So, so far, I think actually Biden's leading in the state of Pennsylvania by a tilt blue margin, but it doesn't matter. Trump has a lead in Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and that's enough to win in the 2024 election. So Biden would have to probably end up flipping Michigan. He needs to campaign a lot on Michigan, for sure, because so far he's down by a considerable amount here. He needs to focus on winning that state. But uh, other than that, this is what the election's looking out to be so far, if it were held today. But uh, other than that, thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, I would highly recommend subscribing. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. If you agree or disagree with this video or what states would you flip. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.